Thank you for everyone joining us to discuss various pediatric urology scenario. Thank you for the trainee who has agreed to record this session so that it will be a good learning resource. You are on call. You got a call from the maternity labor ward stating that there was a boy child born overnight and uh, the pediatrician found that the right testes of the child was uh, absent. How are you going to proceed? Um, so I will uh, go and see this uh, child uh, in the maternity uh, on the maternity ward. I would like to inquire about the uh, a detailed history about the patient. Uh, it was there any evidence of uh, any abnormality picked up on the prenatal scans um, at the time of the birth? Uh, did anyone um, examine his testes and found them to be in the scrotum? Is there any uh, um, um, siblings or father who had a similar story of undescended testes? Uh, I will also take a um, ask about uh, the contralateral testes as well. Ask about any um, maternal problems with pregnancy, um, and ask about the pregnancy of the of, of of this child, the delivery of this child, any other associated problems. Um, uh, I will inquire if this patient is passing any urine. I would then like to go and examine this child. I would like to examine him in a warm room along with his uh, parents, his, mo his mother, uh, with my warm hands along with a, uh, with, a, with a chaperone. I would like to do a general physical examination followed by examination of his uh, abdomen and his genitalia, looking at uh, the, the penis, the foreskin, uh, palpation of bilateral uh, groin and the scrotum and see how well uh, the scrotum is developed. Um, followed by some investigations, uh, which will be uh, a urine dip and a urine culture if uh, indicated. Um, uh, f um, and then uh, f following that, I will um, depend, my further investigation will depend upon the results of my um, history and my examination. So what is the importance of the family history you mentioned about the sibling, brothers or dad's history of undescended testes? How significant is that? Uh, so I know that um, children who um, have had undescended uh, uh, testes um, might uh, they, they might have um, a positive family history of this. Um, so I think I think 14, 15 percent of uh, children with undescended testes uh, might have uh, a, a positive family history of this. Okay. And um, what is the importance of the other side contralateral testes? Say, for example, this patient right side testes is absent. And if the left side testes is uh, quite large and nicely well developed, what significance it makes? Um, so this will uh, indicate to me that uh, um, uh, if I can find, uh, if I sorry, if I cannot find the testes in the other uh, the other test is either, then it might be that this is um, androgenization uh, of the child or there has been some abnormality in the development of it. However, if it's unilateral undescended testes, uh, 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 ha however, if I can only palpate testes in one scrotum, uh, my clinical diagnosis will most likely be either undescended testes or retractile testes. Um, Okay, so in, in this context, uh, you have brought in bilateral non-palpable testes. So whenever you bring bilateral non-palpable testes, your explanation is correct, androgenization, etc. is fine. But also just complete it with one more sentence saying that I will go for the chromosome uh, measurements to make sure that there is no uh, androgen feminization syndrome in this child okay so first of all we okay. need to do the genetic testing to make sure whether the child is karyotypically male or female since you brought the topic the other Fine. one is if the opposite testis is quite large with uh, well developed or you feel the opposite testis is little bit more growth compared to the normal uh, age of the child then it could be yes. a compensatory hypertrophy so you should bring okay. that the compensatory hypertrophy can happen in any pad organ, say lungs or kidneys or testes or ovaries. And so the indirect clue that, okay, there is some compensatory hypertrophy in the single normal testes present on the right side. So that means that the left side may be absent. That, that gives you a kind okay. of a clue whether it's okay. a non-palpable testes or absent testes. And then, of course, you can okay. go ahead with other tests. So okay. this patient, as you know, is now like uh, less than a day old. 
he passed urine well the bloods were okay and uh, the left side testes alone is absent the opposite testes seems to be normal for the boys one day age so you have what's your next steps um, so my next step is going to be um, after examination um, I would like to re-examine this child uh, at a later date in about three months time um, um, as sometimes the testes do descend um, um, at, a, at, a, at a later date um, so I would like to bring him back to clinic in my pediatric clinic in three months time okay you are seeing this patient in three months time the child is gaining good amount of weight and the feeding is fine but uh, the findings were the same the left testis is absent so when you are bringing the child in three months time you should bring in like i will look at the overall general growth of the child feeding and activities okay. also bring that also hold okay. some care okay. okay okay what will you do um, so i will uh, then like to examine this child again i will take a history again and then have a focused examination of the abdomen and the genitalia I will look at the development of the contralateral uh, side as well and uh, palpate the groin and the, the, the scrotum to see if I can palpate this and uh, this, this uh, testes, which I, why I was not able to palpate earlier. Okay. Um, the examination is fine. The contralateral testes is present, but the side of interest, the left side, the testes is absent. What is the next step? Okay. Um, so my next step is going to be, um, I will consent this, uh, uh, I will explain that as uh, this testes is not palpable, it might be that this is the intra-abdominal testes and this patient would bene benefit from examination and anesthesia plus minus uh, laparoscopy. However, as he's only uh, three months old, um, the British Associ Association of uh, Pediatric Surgeons uh, recommend doing uh, uh, this procedure um, which is orchidopexy in about um, uh, three to six months. Um, however, due to um, uh, risks of anesthesia, uh, this should be done at a, uh, an appropriate age, which is likely to be between six uh, months to a year. Okay, so what is your next step? Uh, examination wise, you can't find anything. Is there any role for ultrasound or MRI scans, CT scans? Um, Imaging um, is not very diagnostic of uh, undescended testes. Um, I, I, I'm, I can ask for ultrasound scan, but I, I don't think um, um, a, a, a negative ultrasound scan will be able to exclude undescended testes or intra-abdominal testes altogether or not. Yeah, the only role for ultrasound scan is if you have the suspicion of possible the testes located in groin, the ultrasound mm. will help in further substantiating your examination findings. It can give yes. you a clue, for example, like a tropic nubble present in the groin so that your exploration stops with the groin itself. Otherwise, as Fine. you said, negative ultrasound is quite non-contributory. So this patient ultrasound does not show any nubbin or undescended testes at the level of the inguinal region. What is your next step? The child is now, say, seven month old, fit for anesthesia. So I'll explain to the parents that uh, the next step is going to be examination and anesthesia plus minus laparoscopy and uh, um, um, orchidopexy if need be. Um, uh, of, or, or orchidopexy can be um, two-stage uh, Fallow-Stephens, uh, which, which I prefer. Uh, otherwise, uh, it can be done in one stage as well. Uh, so I will consent him for this procedure, speak to the anesthetist and uh, book him on my list for EAU. EAU. Uh, um, and plus minus uh, Stephen Fowler's. So the first step is EAU. What is the importance of it? So with anesthesia, the child is much more relaxed and the, the muscles are relaxed as well. So if there is a, a strong cremesteric reflex, um, 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 then you can differentiate uh, a true undescended testes uh, versus uh, a strong retractile or or versus a strong uh, retractile testes. Okay, under anesthesia, the um, examination of anesthesia is non-contributory. You can't find any uh, testes in the usual area. So you need to mention about the usual descent places like uh, inguinal region and external inguinal pouch, etc. And also the ectopic testes possibilities like, for example, uh, perineum and root of the scrotum and pubic tubercle and few other places also. Okay. So okay. what is your next step if the examination is not useful? Can I uh, just mention, should I, should I have 
mention these other areas in my examination? Yeah, in the initial examination itself, you can in say that you will do a comprehensive examination. You can bring in that you know about the ectopic testes and you know the normal areas where the ectopic city is possible. Fine, okay. Okay, so what is your next step, patient is under anesthesia? So um, once I've examined this patient and I'm not able to feel the testes in the groin, I will then proceed with the uh, laparoscopy. Um, I will uh, initiate with uh, the laparoscopy and see if I'm able to uh, identify the testes uh, in the um, um, in the inguinal region. Uh, sorry, in, in the in the abdomen. Uh, if I am able to identify it, um, and it is not, uh, if it's a nibbin, then I will just uh, proceed by uh, excision of this uh, nibbin. However, if I'm able to uh, identify this t this um, uh, this this uh, testes. Uh, then um, I should be able to perform a, a, a two-stage uh, Fowler-Stevens procedure, where I can uh, dissect uh, uh, the the the, the gubernaculum or, or any additions to the testes along with the testicular artery, um, and then um, uh, bring him back for a second stage um, uh, Stephen Fowler, uh, where the artery of the uh, um, VAS um, should be able to develop collaterals to the testes and I will then uh, be able to um, uh, deliver the testes into the scrotum and um, stitch it uh, into a subdartos pouch. Uh, if, however, um, doing this uh, uh, Fowler-Stephens laparoscopy, there is a good length and I'm able to uh, bring the testes down into the scrotum, then I can do this procedure uh, in, in one stage. Okay, so the, you can word these answers slightly differently. The first thing is you can say that I will use only the diagnostic laparoscopy. So you will place only the cystoscope, uh, the visualization port and uh, your aim is to look into the internal inguinal ring. There are few possibilities. There may be a healthy testicular vessels and vas entering the internal inguinal ring. If that is the finding, it's quite clear that something is happening in the inguinal region and your examination may have missed it maybe because of the subcutaneous fat then you need to in explore the inguinal region because there is no point in doing anything in the laparoscope part and uh, yeah. the second possibility is there may be uh, like a um, vanishing vas syndrome where the vas is quite atrophic and the vessels also quite atrophic and uh, like almost like a like a non-functional cord entering the internal inguinal region. So that means the testes may have already died. So we can stop the procedure. There is no point in doing the exploration. You may not find anything in the inguinal region and there is nothing in the abdominal cavity also. If the internal inguinal ring is completely clean, it's uh, completely covered by the peritoneum, there is no signs of any vessels, then you need to trace back as per the embryology as high as possible to find out the testes and then try to mobilize it. When you are mobilizing it, you can say that you will try to mobilize as much as possible without compromising much of the artery to see whether you can really mobilize it completely to the opposite inguinal ring, internal inguinal ring. If you could do that, then that indirectly shows on the same side you should be able to pass through the internal inguinal ring and uh, uh, directly puncture it and take it through the scrotum and daughter's pouch. If that is not possible, you should make the decision of the Fowler-Stephens two-stage approach quite early before doing lot of dissection because we need lot of collaterals to develop. So for that, we need the subcutaneous uh, tissue, the, the tissues which is present around the cord structures. You can't skeletonize the cord and then expect uh, the neovascularization and collaterals to develop. So you can explain the follow Stephens and uh, the diagnostic laparoscopy in much more elaborate manner. What okay. is the success rate of follow Stephens uh, single stage and two stage approach? Um, um, I know that the success rate of two stage uh, is higher than the success rate of uh, one stage but I do not know the numbers, I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, even though the answer is correct, the, sometimes the follow Stephen single stage means it may be like uh, the testes which is already nicely descended as close to the internal ring actually, so the success rate is still good. It all depends upon how undescended the testes is. Proximal the testes, agenesis 
happens in the testes, the success rate will be quite poor. Okay, you are able to comfortably do the first stage of this follow Stephens. So what is the first stage? Then how will you plan your second stage? So the first stage of Stephen Fowler is to divide the, uh, uh, the testicular artery um, and the testes is then left on the artery of the vas and the epididymis to develop collaterals. Um, um, and then the patient is, uh, uh, the procedure is, um, um, the patient is closed. A patient is brought back in about six months uh, for a second stage Stephen Fowler procedure. Okay, so you can explain saying that uh, since the testicular artery is now, it's not like a clamped and divided, only just uh, the staples were applied, the continuity is still there. The staples are applied so that the testicular artery is completely occluded. That results in the collateral vessels from the vasa artery to develop and supply the testicular part of it. And since vasa artery is already like a corkscrew type of artery, in the second stage, you can cut the testicular artery further. That will help the spring-like opening up of the collaterals and you can get better mobilization. What is the okay. long-term outcome of these patients? How are you going to follow your baby further? Um, um, I would like to um, uh, see this patient post-operatively in clinic uh, for further assessment to make sure that there has been uh, the test is still in the in, in the scrotum and is developing well. Um, I uh, uh, I would like to exclude any chances of um, um, the test is going back into the inguinal canal or, or in, into the abdomen. Um, and then patients with undescended testes, uh, they are uh, more prone to having testicular cancer as compared to people, uh, as compared to children uh, without undescended testes. Uh, so I will um, want to teach the parents um, examination uh, and, would and would advise them to bring the patient back to uh, under the care of urology or to seek medical attention if they notice any signs, any worrying signs uh, like um, gross growth, pain or pain length lump in his, uh, in his, in his uh, testes. Okay, the last question for the scenario. Why there is an increased incidence of testicular cancer in patients with undescended testes history in the past? Okay, so how it works is the testes requires at least one or two degrees Celsius more than the body temperature. Uh, for the, sorry, the less than the body temperature for normal functioning. Yes. That's why the descent happens. And because the testes present in the scrotal sac, the heat loss will be maximal. So the testicular temperature will be one or two degrees lesser than the actual core body temperature. That's number one. Okay. So that temperature difference is not maintained in an undescended testis. That too crucially in the intrauterine and the early uh, post parturition period. The second thing is there is an absence of the ciliary movement of the testes, and um, this kind of absence of the ciliary movement of the embryological descent will happen only if the testis has got some inherent uh, genetic defect or some structural problems. So all these okay. factors can be extrapolated later into uh, obvious uh, cancer or even um, non-cancerous benign lesions. One way or another, the testis can lead up to a problem or even the testis will end up as a very low secretor of good sperms. The, if at all if the patient has become normal and fertile it's because of the opposite contralateral testes because these patients usually maintain normal testosterone because of the opposite normal testes normal yeah. sexual drive and libido again because of the opposite normal testes and uh, normal fatherhood because of the uh, one unilateral testes so usually fatherhood sexual interest libido testosterone level androgenization nothing is affected in a unilateral patient Okay. Good. Any questions before we complete the scenario? Uh, no, Mr. D. Okay.